All right, next up in Michelle's world tour mythic guide is a tall Dazar. So at the very beginning, you can kill like one to two trash mobs, and then you can jump down into the pit to kill Rezan. The mechanics for this boss are generally pretty easy. From what I've noticed from doing the boss, I think that ads will spawn on their own, even if you don't step into clouds, because obviously the fight would be way too easy if it didn't happen that way, because smart players would just not step in the clouds. So he casts Terrifying Visage, and you can use a bunch of pillars and stuff around to line a sight. What I like to do is basically just dip in at the last second, so the cast is usually four seconds. You don't want to be line of sighting the whole time. And then the other thing that he does is he pursues somebody where he chases someone and you have to run away or he'll chomp on your ass, crunch your bones, munch on you, and then it's going to deal a lot of damage. So I'm pretty sure on Tyrannical, if he starts chomping on your ass, you're pretty much dead. And if you run into a purple cloud while you're running away from him, it will greatly slow you. Sorry, I burped. But aside, oh, another one. Aside from that, that's pretty much the gist for this fight. This trash pack, the mobs you mainly want to watch out for are the Dazari Augur, which is a mob that spam casts wildfire, and you want to interrupt that as much as possible because it applies a dot debuff onto people, and it can be dispelled, which the healer should be doing, but they chain cast that. So you want to prevent the entire party from getting blanketed in wildfire. And the confessor as well casts the heal that needs to be interrupted. Also another thing that I sort of noticed with my friend when I ran this with him is that that red-orange circle, I believe that if the mobs are tanked in there, you cannot interrupt. So. The tank will need to move the mobs out of that once that is up. For this large pack specifically, it's pretty obvious that this will be a difficult pack for Mythic Plus on Fortified, but the main thing to watch out for is the Colossus needs to die first because the passive allows him to heal and also gain a stacking damage buff when enemies die around him, so you want to make sure it dies first. It also channels Soul Burn, which is a pretty hard hitting ability, and you don't want that mob to be up for too long to be able to get multiple casts of that off. So, yeah, focus that down first and then clean up the rest. The main mob that you need to watch out for that is new from the other ones is the Priestess. She casts a spell that is just like the boss called Transfusion, and hers is a single target, so whoever she's targeting, you just want to move into the pool of blood that way. When she's channeling it after her cast is over, she doesn't heal at all. Alright, on to Priestess Alunza. So, she, like I mentioned, she will have a cast just like the Priestess, where she will have transfusion later on, where basically everybody in the party wants to make sure they get into a pool of blood to make sure she doesn't heal at all. I feel like if... I would imagine on Tyrannical that if she gets heals off, it will really make this fight much more difficult, but I'm not sure. That's just what I'm imagining. Um, there's going to be an ad that spawns on the platform where she is originally standing, and it will move towards pools of blood and pretty much eat them, and you don't want it to manage to do that, so the second it's out, you need to switch and kill it right away. She also casts an ability called Gilded Claws, which increases her damage done. I'm not sure about the number, maybe it's like 25%, but spell steal that, or dispel it offensively as a Shadow Priest. Sky Screamer Pterodactyl will cast a Fear that needs to be interrupted. That's about it for that one. For this pack, I'd imagine that you want to interrupt the Witch Doctor as much as possible, and also the Shield Bearer of Zul when they channel Bulwark of Juju. You want to interrupt that, or at least fear it off, because it creates a bubble that reduces damage taken 
by 90%, which you don't want. Within these packs, there is a polymorph that goes out, so mages will need to decurse and druids as well. The large pack right before the boss, I definitely recommend killing the reanimated honor guards first. And ideally, you want to target them all three DPS just to make sure they are going down as fast as they can because the poison shit that they drop and throw on the ground, that is gonna start cluttering up really quickly and it makes it really difficult to deal maximum DPS as arranged when you have to constantly move. Also, they occasionally will just naturally do AoE damage to everyone in the party. They'll like throw some goo shit at you. So yes, I recommend targeting them down first and the witch doctors will also need to be interrupted whenever they can and the hex or polymorph will also still go out for this pack so people will need to decurse. Alright, for Vokal, you want to start off the fight killing off the reanimation totems and it is very important that you kill them all at the same time because once one is down to 0%, it will start casting something that I believe will heal them back to full. Okay, so I actually decided to look up the boss instead of just saying information that I wasn't confident about. So the reason you want the reanimation totems dead is because if any of them are alive, he gets a buff called Bad Voodoo, which heals him for 5% of his maximum health in intervals. So of course you don't want something like that. So they need to die and they also need to die at the same time. Once all of them are dead, he starts to decay and he inflicts shadow damage to himself, but it also causes him to throw pulls around the map. I would imagine that for this boss, it would probably be wise to sort of stack up I'm not entirely positive, but I'm thinking Mythic Plus ways. You just don't want to waste room, and I haven't really tested it, but I'm assuming that the pools land around where people are standing, but if it's random, then it's whatever. It's probably going to be a DPS race. And the other thing you really want to watch out for is Toxic Leap. Don't let him sit on your face and there will be a disease debuff that goes out so just use your dispel on somebody preferably yourself and that should be it for the last boss yasma you want to make sure that racking pain gets interrupted when she begins to cast soul rend everybody wants to move as far away from her as possible and then when the cast is done an ad will spawn where you were standing and you want to dps them down before they reach her there will also be spiders that are wandering around the fight area and what I've learned is that even if they're not glowing, they can still deal damage to you. So when they're glowing, they follow and move towards you, but when they're not glowing, they're just kind of wandering and neutral, passive, they're not trying to chase you. But when you touch them and then when they die, they will leave behind a small purple pool that will just damage you if you stand in it. It would seem to me that it would be a really good idea for ranged to stack on each other or be in the general area of each other. That way when the soul rend adds spawn, people can just kind of AoE them down. Honestly, even though this place seems like it has a lot of challenging trash packs at times, I feel like it's one of the few that I like because it seems like it can be a really fast dungeon and there isn't any waiting nonsense or random BS you have to deal with. But yeah, that is a tall desire for you, and I hope you enjoyed the video.